My girl said, how you like your tortas? I said, 5'3", max, 200 pounds minimum. I always got an appetite for a little torta. Damn, cousin. Those holes are really tight. Bruh. I don't even think my finger can fit in there. Oh, God. What? The bowling balls. The holes on the bowling balls. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know something else that's tight, too. What? If you ever want your brakes to stop squeaking, just put some wheel bearing grease on the routers. Oh, my God, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck, man? Get your ass. What's the freakiest thing he's asked you to do? Nothing. Why are you being weird? She like fart in my mouth and I say okay. Really? Yeah. Oh, we're different. She likes that shit though. So I do what she wants. Oh, you on what she on. I so, take care of her. So if she asks you to eat your ass, you doing it? I do it. No hesitation. Let's say her. she asks you to, to peg your to right. peg you. Would you do it? Sure. Oh, damn. Is that something you would do? Yeah, she would. Wow, man. Uh... What in the actual fuck? Like, where do they find these fucking people? Like, don't you keep anything to yourself? What the fuck's actually going on? She didn't even say nothing. He said she farted it in my mouth. And th I hope he doesn't know what pegging is. He said, yeah, I'm down. What the fuck? I'm not kid. I'll just be here listening to my tunes. Drugs got me fucked up. Sluts got me drugged up. It's weird that I spent all this money. I spent all this time making it shiny and shit. Always cleaning it off. Always doing this. Just for the off chance that some other dude's gonna like it. I think this is one of the gayest things I own. HA! GAY! Rejected. Just remember, fellas, that prostitutes are rented, girlfriends are leased, and wives are financed. Kinda ironic cause you can do the same with vehicles. The main difference is the vehicle only nags you when you don't put your goddamn seatbelt on. So tell me, what's your next truck gonna be my boy? Man, that's funny. One of the first trucks I ever built when I was 15 years old was a C10 Chevy long bed. Kinda like this truck right here. I had built a 500 horsepower engine, put it in there before I had my license, put a four nine inch, slammed it to the ground, all disc brakes, line lock, put the windshield wiper sprayers and the back tire sprayed bleach on them. I was power breaking it every chance I got. Dad, do you think I'm ugly? What do you, no, you're not ugly. You're just retarded. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly right. Zero in on the problem, pops. The women who think they out here finessing these men. I've never known a man who is smart enough to make a whole bunch of money, but too dumb to know when a woman is using him for money. A man knows when he's being used, and he's okay with being used. Why? Because he's using you too. He's getting exactly what he wants, baby, your body. And your body is way more valuable than his paper, but you're the one treating it like it's a fair trade. And then you'll call him a trick, but who's the trick? When he gets to go out tomorrow and get some new money, while you're still stuck with that same old ran through... Yeah, we had this clip before, but I gotta say, man, this is the realest chick we ever had on the show. That's the absolute truth. I fucking don't give a shit if you're using me for some money, because all I want is one thing. I'm gonna get it, and I don't, I'll just go get some more money later. I don't really care. It's the easiest trade we ever had. Just gotta get your money up and take advantage of it. Say what? Say what? Say what? Say what? Say, Say what? What? If you're a man with any level of testosterone and you've been witnessing what's been happening in the world in the last two years, I struggle to sleep at night. Like literally what's happening is fucking crazy. They're lying to you about the inflation rate. You're, you're not getting a pay rise. Like where's your panic? People are not panicking. They lack perspicacity. They're not paying attention to anything. They're just sitting there waiting for the fucking steamroller. You think in 10 years from now things are going to be better? Are you out of your fucking mind? Man, a few episodes ago, I had a moment like this at the end of one of the sh at the one end of these shows, and uh, man, you know, I've been studying this shit since I was like nineteen. Man, I know they did it all. I can't even say what they did, but they did it all. Look into anything. I've known about it for a long time, and it used to fuck with me on a day to day basis. But now I really got to sit down and just have good days. And I know no matter what happens, I'll see myself through. So 
rather than worrying about it all the time and thinking about it and analyzing it all the time, which you could easily do, kind of ruin every day that you have. I just know that I'm a strong enough man that when shit hits the fan, I'll be ready to take it on headstrong. Life is like a penis. It's short. It hangs out. It's simple. And then a woman <laughs> makes it hard. Back to you. In the modern world, in the Matrix mind, they want you to have a relationship with a girl and she's allowed to do whatever she wants. She can go partying with other dudes. She can go out and she can drink. She can walk alone at night. She can do all this stupid shit. She can tell you she doesn't want to listen to you because you're oppressive, but you still have to pay for everything for her and constantly entertain her all of the time. Otherwise, you're a bad person. And they want you to sign up to these relationships. And when you end up miserable, they have what they want. I love my life. I hope y'all love y'all. If you broke, there ain't nobody problem but yours. If your bitch cheating on you, get a new bitch. If your nigga ain't doing right, get a new nigga. Nah, that's too simple, man. We got to keep life way more complicated than that. Secret bait for hooking into a giant bluefin tuna. Well, check it out. Get up closer. You can see. Right where it is in the hinge book. Check it out. Look at this. Holy shit. Fuck Joe <laughs> That's what we caught him on. <laughs> Fuck Joe I'm not toxic. I'm classy. So I'm toxic. So talking to adults at work about sex is sexual harassment, but talking to kids at school about sex is necessary? Strange times. I follow this guy on Instagram. He never fucking misses every morning. Make it make sense. And if it makes sense to you, make sense of, tell me what's going on in the comments because you're a clown. One of the worst things we can do as men is to be with women who don't want us. I've been in that position too. I have simped, I've been in the friend zone, I've done all that kind of stuff. And I will tell you, gentlemen, don't do it. Never do that. It's never a good idea. Stop trying to win women over. And see, that's the beautiful thing about becoming a high value man. You don't have to win women over. You deal with the women who show interest in you and want to get on your program and are proving their worth to you. Man, that's the realest shit right there, guys. You get your shit together, right? And then women will really see that you got it together and you don't really got to approach them. I got girls that be texting my phone every fucking day. It's hump day. Happy birthday. Fucking uh, good morning. Did you lock your car? All these different weird ways to maintain talking. When they drive by, they'll stop. Block traffic. How you doing? What's going on? You know, it's hella obvious. So, And I got girls that, you know, I'm telling them, hey, I'm kind of interested in you. They ain't fucking with me. Well, you know, you could tell if, if they ain't get on your program, then tch, fuck chilling in the friend zone. Get on with it because there's plenty of girls that are actually interested and you got a little bit of time in the day. So if you have your shit together, they'll line up. It'll be real obvious which ones that are trying to fuck with you. Ever wish you could meet someone again for the first time and walk straight fucking past them? It's our first official dinner in Greece. I'm wearing this teeny tiny dress. And I feel like I'm going to get a lot of eyes. Hi, um, eyes. <laughs> That would be ideal, but a lot of other eyes. She belongs to the streets. That I think the reason why I have so much, like when people are like, no, no way 5,000. I'm like, for sure, because when I used to go to festivals, I'd be like, if you can find me, I'll give you a free blow. So I literally like at festivals, I think in one night, you have like 50 or 60 blow jobs and like they're a three day event. completion? For sure, yeah. No way. I, know. Now, I want y'all to really think about how crazy this is, but Let, let's do our math. All right, so there's 5,000 bodies, right? There's 365 days in a year. That's one body every day for 13 years. Since 2010, that's one body every day. Ladies and gentlemen, what we're looking at right now is a true athlete. Bro, the endurance, the tenacity, is not too many players in the game who would even think about completing a feat like this, let alone actually completing it. She putting up Jordan numbers, 50 in a day? Who's doing that? Who, who has the jaw strength, the jaw endurance to do that? Nobody. She has real genuine love for the game, bro. She's doing community work, community service. She's sending up a BJ Beacon to the fans and letting them get one for free. Who is doing that? Who is doing that, bro? I can't count, bro. She is the D Rose of her industry, bro. If she would have never got hurt, bro, easily top five. 
But you know what I can say? With everything I know, everything I've seen, the stat line, that's my GOAT. Oh yeah, that's my GOAT. This video is crazy. This is the best way to eat an ice cream cone. It's so good. My friends and I used to do this back in the day. I had to eat it really fast, but if it was too hot, sometimes he'd put it in his ass. Hey yo, what the fuck? If a man marries a woman and she gets older, will he keep her? Yes, because men are good people. Men are good people and we keep, we keep women. We don't treat women like y'all would treat us. See, if a woman had a man and her value increased later in life and his decreased, women would get rid of the men. But see, we're good people. <laughs> I know they're going to get mad at me on that one. Looks like we got a couple Kevin Samuel clips, man. Bring back Kevin Samuel. God bless the guy. But, uh, you know, that is the absolute truth. And, you know, as a man, we sign up to be with the women. We know that they're in a declining situation. There's no woman, you know, all right, there's a big population, there's exceptions to the rule, but at the end of the day, you know, there's not very many po women, like 1%, that get better looking when they get older. They get looser, fatter, uglier, more opinionated, more attitude. It's just like, you know, we just put up with it. But I swear to God, guys, if we fucking go into a coma and go broke, chances are this bitch going to leave us in the dust. So... Man, it's wild how it is, but that is what it is. It's about time we really thought about it, because why do we get married to people that would treat us like that? So we sacrifice 100%, and they don't do shit for us. So it ain't worth it. Hey, guys, have you noticed that the further away you get from where people live, the better the scenery is? It's almost like people ruin things. Imagine that. And that's exactly why I said that in this industry, I'm single until mm -hmm. I retire. But I don't, will, but it I, will still matter. I don't plan on doing the getting married or finding the love of my life until I retire, yeah. like truthfully. And, and then I after that, that, you see what happens to the ag doll. No, no, no. And then after that, I will be honest and truthful with the person that I will be getting married to or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it'll be up to him to accept that. Right. So, and, I, and, and I'm just saying that men's decision. natural proclivity is to not accept that because it brings them shame. This is why women struggle to get married when they've made themselves available on OnlyFans because other men don't want to share. They don't want to share their wife. They maybe will share their girlfriend. They might think it's fun to date a stripper for a little bit. They might think, oh, this means I'm going to have sex 12 times a day. But then when it gets down to just their biological instinct, it's it's actually quite embarrassing for them as a man because they can look up your girl and here she is, you know? So that's what I think is happening. Just in case there's any uh, women out there wondering, she's 100% right. 100%. There's, there's no arguing it at all. Freedom is only one generation away from extinction. Mm -hmm. All these people that, that complain about these billionaires and all these guys... Who do you think's keeping this country afloat? How do you think this works, you dummies? Right? Where do you think this, this government money comes from? <laughs> Where, you know, one of the things, all you young people that are watching this right now, you don't want anything from the government. The only thing you want from the government is for them to stay out of your business. That's it as less government as absolutely possible if you think the government is ever going to take care of you and make all your hopes and dreams come true you are out of your mind it's not how it works it's not how it works so i'd walk up to a girl and i'd say have we fucked before i'm just kidding hi nice to meet you and that emotion arises inside of them like who the fuck is this guy and then immediately because you're like i'm just kidding hi how are you and you laugh and you smile now you open the door and now they feel a really positive emotion at a super high intensity and you might say it doesn't work but it always works because of how ridiculously shocking it is i got her attention most people are like i think you're really pretty what's your number you know i don't know if i got the balls to try that one i don't know if i believe it either but uh what do you guys think all right, you made it. Thanks for getting to the end. And now it's time for Larry's final thought. All right, y'all. Let's see what I got for you today. You know, in life, I think that a lot of the different powers that be have convinced us of stuff that probably isn't true. One of them for me is the eight hours of sleep thing. Um, some people like my employees will come and be like, I didn't get enough sleep. I didn't get eight hours of sleep. No entrepreneur is really getting eight hours of sleep. I might get eight hours of sleep every once in a while, but a lot of times I'm running on five, six, but I don't give a fuck. I'm not going to be like, oh, I'm hella tired. You're, you're actually not. It's just all up inside your head. 
And since they told you that, you think it's a real thing, but they're lying. They don't want people to be successful. So they, it, the longer you sleep, the less hours you got to make it to where they are. But the one I really want to touch on today is feeling terrible. The, see, society has made you think that if anything makes you feel terrible, that you should probably get rid of it. If it gives you anxiety, stress, if it makes you feel worry, um, you know, things like that, it makes you feel financially burdened. They're think they're saying, you know, you need to get that out of your life because it's making you feel unhappy. It's making you feel these different things. But the fact is, like they used to say, no pain, no gain. So, you know, when you go to the gym for the first couple weeks, maybe even a month, you feel terrible. It's, it's hard on your body, but you got to get there. Maybe like when you're in college, you know, the college schoolwork has got to be fucking terrible. But when you finally get your degree and it paid off, that's the reward. You had to feel terrible before you got to the place. I think a lot of businesses fail in the first five years because for one, people can't get anywhere in five years. They can't like map it out and get there without unpredictabilities, unpredictabilities taking place. And then them giving up for whatever reason makes the most sense. But outside of that, before your business reaches success, before you become a smart enough entrepreneur in that genre to figure out all the secrets and become efficient, you're going to feel terrible. You're going to feel overworked. You're going to feel anxiety. You're going to feel burdened. You're going to feel all these different feelings. And if you go with society's narrative that if things make you feel bad, get rid of them because your life's too short to have things in your life that are making you feel bad, you're going to give up. And I think a lot of people... <clears throat> within the first five years, reach that point. Um, you know, but again, get over it. Shit that makes you feel terrible turns you into a real man. I mean, relationships and stuff. I ain't with that. If people are making you feel terrible, that's a whole nother scenario. But if it's a business, if it's about growth, if it's the gym, if it's, you know, things of that nature, your future, it's going to, you're going to feel all sorts of different feelings and you're going to have to learn how to manage the feelings and not give up rather than say, oh my God, this business is making me feel terrible. I'm not going to allow this to happen in my life anymore. It's like, you know, there's no chance in hell you're going to get to the finish line without feeling something in between. All right, y'all. I always appreciate you tuning in. Please like, share, and subscribe. We're going to see you on the next one.